So when it comes to insulin and spiking that and its relationship to cancer, what's happening there? Yeah, so again, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of sort of uh, growth factors. So anything that's, so remember, if you're an adult, you generally don't want to grow, right? You're, you're, you don't want your liver to grow. You don't want your kidneys to grow. You don't, growth is bad. When you're a kid, of course, growth is good. You have to go from a baby to an adult. But when you're an adult, stuff is not supposed to grow. So growth is bad. So if you have uh, factors that increase growth, then it's generally bad because if, if, if you have a cancer that's brewing in there, for example, it's going to be highly dependent on growth. So insulin is a growth factor. Insulin is also a nutrient sensor. So when you eat, insulin goes up. So this, what you eat plays a big role in what your insulin levels actually are. It turns out that insulin, and, and for years that's all we thought insulin was, but insulin turns out to be one of the most sort of fundamental growth factors we have. In fact, if you look back at primitive animals, insulin was not used as a nutrient sensor before. It was used as a growth factor. As we evolve, we actually use the same factor for both growth and nutrient sensing. And that makes sense because insulin tells you that nutrients are available. So you only want to grow when nutrients are available, right? Because if you grow in a period of famine, well, you're huge, you need a lot of food and there's no food to eat, that's not going to be good. So in order to survive, our body uh, decided, hey, we're going to use the same molecule, insulin, for both new to, to sense that nutrients are available and to signal the body to grow. So therefore, we're going to be able to link what's on the outside, the nutrition, and what's on the inside, which is the growth. And the whole um, uh, thing is that if you... If you increase insulin, like with obesity, if you're eating foods that spike insulin, if you're eating all the time, uh, obesity and type 2 diabetes are both states of high insulin. So if you have high insulin, not only do you have obesity and type 2 diabetes, but you are also signaling your cells to grow quickly. Cancer cells actually are very, many of them are very insulin dependent. That is, in order to grow, they need glucose. They, they live on glucose. That's what fuels their growth more than anything else. In order to get glucose from the blood into the cell, they need insulin. So they love insulin because they're trying to grow, grow, grow. Remember, the cancer cell is like a, a single cell. It wants to grow as much as possible at the expense of its neighbors. In order to grow, it wants as much glucose as possible so it it it. it puts out as many insulin receptors as possible. So it's much more insulin sensitive than the cells around it. So that when insulin is available, it'll pull that insulin and grab that glucose. So if you look at a breast cancer, for example, uh, breast cells have very few insulin receptors. They don't need it. But breast cancer cells have tons of insulin. In fact, in the lab, if you deprive breast cancer cells of insulin, they shrivel up and die. They can't survive without the insulin. It's a growth factor to them, right? If you take away the growth factor, they don't grow. So, uh, you know, for breast cancer, for colorectal cancer, these are both uh, very insulin dependent uh, for their growth. So therefore, if you're providing a state of high insulin, you're going to tip the favor towards cancer growth. There's a, a group of people in uh, Ecuador who have this funny genetic mutation called Lauren dwarfism. And uh, they, they don't sense insulin at all. And the funny part about it, so they basically don't have any insulin. They don't have the growth factors that come with insulin. So they're all dwarfs. They're short. But they also don't get cancer. It turns out they're almost completely immune to cancer. That's crazy. So it's like if you completely stop that insulin sensing, then you completely got rid of that cancer. So that's, that's just one of the, the things that's important. And, and the reason that's important is because we can control the insulin levels by what we eat. We can eat things that are not going to spike insulin. We're going to eat sort of other things that are not going to spike growth. We can do things like intermittent fasting, which is going to allow your insulin levels to fall. Because remember, insulin is a nutrient sensor. So there are things that you can do um, 
that that may impact your risk. And mostly it comes down, um, you know, those things will also affect your weight, of course. So therefore you can get a good proxy of how it's doing by your weight. So when it comes to cancer and insulin, is it all about prevention or for somebody that has cancer, it sounds like it's both. It's is both. it for prevention and for somebody treating? It's going to be mostly for, for prevention. Um, on the other hand, if you have cancer, then again, you don't have to get rid of all of the cancer, but you can sort of deprive cancer of much of its growth potential by, you know, trying to limit insulin as much as you can, right? Again, if it's, if you have an obesity associated cancer, you get rid of the obesity, hopefully it'll be better. So if you have an early stage colorectal cancer or early stage breast cancer, it doesn't change what you should do. You should still do everything that the standard oncologist will tell you, you know, whether you need surgery, whether you need radiation, whether you need chemo, it doesn't change any of that. But as an adjunctive therapy to keep yourself well, because remember this, you could have any of those cancers and still live another 20 years. You just don't want that cancer to come back, right? You know you have a tendency towards that cancer. So if you know that insulin is a huge risk factor for breast cancer, you should try to limit insulin. Or if you know that it's, it's, it, it could have uh, colorectal cancer, you want to try to eat as well as you can to prevent that. So it's, it's mostly prevention, but, um, you know, in terms of treatment, people have tried to use it, um, you know, with variable results, because by the time you get to that stage, those sort of things, it, it's sort of like if you think about lung cancer, you say stop smoking. Well, that's really important, but it's not going to do anything for your lung cancer, right? You can stop smoking the minute you get that diagnosis. It's still, you still need all the usual treatments, the surgery, the radiation, and all that. Yet at the same time, smoking was this sort of overriding risk factor. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. These studies have been replicated over and over and over for the last 30 years of attributable risk. And diet and obesity is that second huge bucket and nobody's talking about.